going to talk about clustering with outliers and approximation algorithms and the distributed algorithms. So depending on the time, I may only be able to talk about the approximation algorithms. Okay, I guess now all of you are familiar with the clustering. So we are given a set of points in a metric and we are given a number K. The goal of the problem is to partition the points into K clusters and to minimize some objective function. So typically we have K media and K means clustering. So for K media, you choose one point for each cluster and connect all the points in that cluster to the point. And then the goal is to minimize the sum of the connection distances. And the k-means is to minimize the sum of the squared connection distances. However, the definition of the problems are not robust to noise. So imagine uh, if you have those data points, but there are some outliers in the data points. And if you try to do the clustering again, you will get a very bad clustering. So the structure of the clustering does not reflect the actual clusters and the quantity of the clustering is also very bad. Then to uh, overcome this issue, people have uh, introduced the clustering with outliers problem. So in addition, we are given a number Z of outliers and then in the objective, you are allowed to discard Z outliers and only construct clustering for the remaining points. And in practice, you may need to try different values of Z to find a good trade-off between the number of outliers and the quantity of the clustering. Okay, so formally, this is the problem we are studying here. So for the K-median with outliers problem, so I'm going to use the context of facility and location. So, so we are given a set F of potential facilities and we are given a set C of clients. So there's a common metric over F union C and we are given integers K and Z. So the goal of the problem is to choose a set S of facilities of size K. So for those facilities, we say we open them. And at the same time, we can choose the set O of clients of size Z that are called outliers. And for the remaining uh, clients, we need to connect uh, them to the nearest facilities in ACE, the nearest open facilities. So the goal is to minimize some of the clients that are not in O, the distance from the client to the nearest open facility. So DJS is just the distance from J to the nearest facility in S. Okay, so in the clustering context, uh, uh, the set S is the set of K centers, then the set of clients with the same nearest uh, facility in S form a cluster. Then in the k-means uh, with outliers problem, uh, then the objective is to minimize the sum of squared distances. So for example, in this uh, example, you can open the three facilities here, connect the clients to facilities. Uh, there will be two clients that are not connected. So often when we talk about k-means with or without outliers, people often refer to continuous version of the problem. So that means the set C of clients come from a Euclidean space and the set F of potential facilities is the whole Euclidean space and the D is just the Euclidean metric. This is commonly used in machine learning because when you have a set of uh, clients in a a cluster, then the best center for the clients is the mean of those points. So it's just convenient to assume every point in the Euclidean space is a potential vicinity. Okay, so the first part of the talk will be about approximation algorithms for clustering without layers. Okay, so what's known for the problems 
in terms of approximation uh, algorithms. For the problems without outer layers, and uh, they are studied for quite a long time, and uh, we have a, a very good understanding of those problems. So for k-median problem, uh, the best approximation ratio is achieved by Bika et al, which achieves a ratio of 2.675. And uh, on the negative side, the problem is hard to approximate within a factor of one plus two over E, which is roughly 1.736. That comes from the set cover hardness. And uh, for k-means, the approximation ratio is, the best approximation ratio is 6.357 um, by Ahmadiyya et al. And on the negative side, the problem is hard to approximate within a ratio of one point, sorry, one plus eight over E. Uh, again, this is from the set cover uh, problem. So this is for the discrete version of the k-means problem. And if the points are from the Euclidean space, then there is only a APX hard, uh, hardness result. Okay, so what do we know about the problem without layers? And uh, so the first result, for the k-median without layers is really a bicriteria uh, result. So Charika et al. showed that if you are allowed to have one plus epsilon times the outer layers, then you can achieve four times one plus one over E approximation. So this is a bicriteria approximation. So you compare your cost with the best solution with only the outer layers, but you uh, have a one plus e, a one plus e epsilon times the outer layers. And the first two constant approximation was given by Chen in 2008, but the algorithm he gave is quite complicated and the constant achieved is a implicit huge constant. And for k-means without layers, so we don't know any we did not know any true approximation algorithms before our work. So there are algorithms that achieve constant uh, by criteria approximation, either by violating the number of outer layers or by violating the number of facilities we open. And for example, Gupta showed that you can achieve a constant approximation by having order KZ log and outer layers. So the number of outer layers will be a factor of k times log and more. So they assume k is a very small number. And uh, then Frigstad showed that you can achieve a constant approximation for the problem with one plus epsilon k vicinities. And uh, in the doubling or Euclidean matrix space, the uh, approximation ratio can be made to one plus epsilon. Okay, in this talk, uh, we are going to uh, give our iterative rounding framework for the k-median and the k-means with outliers problem. And this is jo joint work with Krishna Swami and Sandy. So our framework is a unified framework. It works for k-median and k-means or in general LP norm of the connection distances. So for the k-median with outliers problem, we gave a 7.081 approximation. And for k-means without layers, the approximation ratio is roughly 53. Okay. And uh, notice that this uh, approximation ratio for k-median without layers has been improved recently by Gupta et al uh, to the ratio of 6.387. Okay. So, in the remaining part of the talk, I'm going to first introduce the iterative rounding framework for our clustering uh, problems, and then we show the analysis. Okay, so there are some good news and some bad news regarding the, the problem. So recall that we need to design a iterative rounding procedure. So we need a linear programming relaxation. And the bad news is that the natural linear programming relaxation for the problem has an unbounded integrality gap. 
The good news is, so if in our output, we are allowed to have two fractional facilities, then the integrated gap becomes a constant. So that means we are allowed to open k minus one uh, integral facilities. And then there are two fractional facilities, their fraction sum up to one. And that's k facilities in total. And uh, if we are allowed to do that, then the gap becomes a one. And we call such a solution a almost integral solution. Okay. So then this is the overview of the whole algorithm. So we solve the LP relaxation, we get a fractional solution Y. And I'm going to talk about this LP relaxation soon. And then we have a rounding algorithm that rounds this fractional solution to an almost integral solution Y. So a tilde Y contains K minus one integral facilities and the two fractional facilities whose tilde Y values add up to one. And this will lose a factor of 7.081. So the cost of this solution is this number times the cost of the LP. So if we are allowed to with K plus one facilities, then you have a 7.081 approximation for the problem. So you just uh, open both for a fraction of facilities. So this will give us a pseudo approximation, which is already interesting. And uh, to get exactly K facilities, uh, we need to first do some pre-processing step to get some good instance that we call sparse instance. So if you have a sparse instance, then the integrated gap of the LP is good. So we can convert the almost integral solution tilde Y to an integral solution with K integral vicinities. And the loss of this procedure is only an additive effect of epsilon. So that means we do the pre-processing at the beginning, then we form a LP around it to get a almost integral solution. Then we convert it to the final integral solution. And the, the main focus of the talk will be this component, the iterative rounding procedure to convert the fractional solution into an almost integral solution. Moreover, most of the time we will focus on the k-median problem, k-median without outliers. So in the literature, the two problems are very different, k-median and k-median with outliers. And the most of the algorithms are hard to extend to the k-median with outliers problem. But our algorithm is very friendly to the k-median with outliers problem. So if you have the algorithm for k-median, you can extend it to k-median with outliers and with a small modification. So in the talk, we are going to focus on the k-median problem without outliers. Okay, so let me start uh, with the standard LP relaxation for the problem. So by the way, if you have questions, you can stop me at any time. Okay, okay so this is the standard LP relaxation for k-median. So remember, we don't have outliers. So we have two sets of variables, yi for every potential facility i indicates if we want to open i or not. So xij will indicate whether we need to connect j to the facility i or not. And uh, then if i is connected to j and we need to have a cost of dij. So this is uh, what we try to minimize sum of xij dij over all pairs ij. So the first constraint says we can open at most k facilities. The second constraint says for every client j, it should be connected to exactly one facility. So this constraint says if you wanted to connect j to i, then i should be open. So if yi is zero, xij should be zero. And all the variables are non-negative, but uh, you can see that they will always be between zero and one in the linear program. Okay, so this is the 
a linear programming relaxation for the problem. So let's see what a LP solution looks like. So using some standard procedure, we can assume that xij is either zero or yi. So that means suppose some uh, facility i is open to an extent of yi, then a client j is either uh, not connected to the vicinity. So xij is zero, or it's connected to the vicinity at the four extension. So xij is yi. And uh, this can be done by splitting uh, vicinities. Okay. So in this case, this is our j. Uh, the numbers, the, they are y values, and then j is connected to the four facilities and the sum of their y values is one. And uh, so this is what a fractional solution looks like. And we call those facilities here Fg. And the Fg is just the set of facilities with Xij being Yi. Then in this solution, we have that the sum of y values in Fj is exactly one. And the connection cost of j in the LP is defined as the average distance from j to the vicinity uh, in Fg, where the average is with respect to this uh, weights yi. Okay. And uh, since we are trying to design a iterative rounding procedure, we hope that the polytope is good. Uh, the ideal case is the polytope itself is integral. However, this is not the case if you have all the constraints uh, in the LP. So you require a yf to be at most k, yfj to be exactly one for every j in c. This is not integral polytope. Uh, so fjs, they can overlap. Uh, our idea is to construct a core set c star of clients satisfying the following two conditions. So first, if you only look at the clients in C star, the both Fj, they are disjoint. So Fj over all J in C star are disjoint. And uh, if you have this condition, then this polytope, so C replaced by C star becomes integral. And this is just a, a nominal matured polytope. Okay, then the second property is this core set captures the original set C very well. So that means if a client J is not in the core set, then it is close to some client J prime in the core set. By close, we mean the distance is not too big compared to the cost of J in the LP. So if we can do this, then uh, we are done. Uh, however, this works only for the k-center problem. For the k-center problem, if you write down the LP, you find a core set that will give you a three approximation. So what goes wrong with the k-median problem? Okay, imagine we have the two clients here, j and j prime. So majority of facilities in Fj are very close to j. Majority of facilities in Fj prime are very close to J prime. But Fj and Fj prime share a, only a small fraction of the facilities. And those facilities, they are far from, away from J and they are far away from J prime. Then what do we have? Then the average distance from J to Fj. So that is the cost of J in the LP is very small compared to the radius of the ball, compared to the maximum connection distance for J. The same happens for J prime. Uh, since the two balls, they overlap, they cannot be both in C star. J and J prime, they cannot both be in C star. We need FJs to be disjoint. But on the other hand, J cannot take care of J prime, and J prime cannot take care of J, right? So the distance from J to J prime is very big compared 
to the cost of G. Okay, so this is the issue with K-media. So while in K-center, this is the cost, the maximum connection distance is the cost, then uh, G prime can take care of G. Okay, so here is the issue. And uh, how do we uh, overcome the issue? So this is the idea. Suppose our we have J prime in C star, then we need to use J prime to take care of J. So what we do is we draw an inner ball for J. The radius of the inner ball uh, BJ is the radius of the outer ball FJ divided by two. Okay, FJ has radius RJ, then the inner ball has radius RJ over two. And this is the inner ball. Then in the iterative rounding procedure, we have maintained a, a linear program and a LP solution. In the solution, the cost of J is defined as follows. So first, for every I in BJ, we have YI times DIJ. So that is J is connected to all the clients in, in BJ, all, all the facilities in BJ, and we have the cost. Maybe YBJ is less than one. Then for the remaining one minus one YBJ fraction, we use the connection distance RJ over two. Okay, we just use this as an estimation because the connection distance is at least RJ over two. Uh, outside BJ, but we use it as the connection cost. So what does this mean? So it means, suppose in a solution, in an integral solution, some vicinity in BJ is open, then that vicinity will take care of J. We use that as the connection cost of J, but if nothing inside this BJ is open, then the connection the distance is RJ over two at least, but then I will be able to use J prime to take care of J. So the distance between J and J prime is of order RJ, and it's not too big compared to RJ over two. So this is what this objective means. So if some uh, facilities is open here, we use the true distance. If nothing in BJ is open, and then we let J prime take care of J. Okay, then in the LP, we need to have this YBJ is at most one to make sure the objective makes sense. But in the iterative rounding procedure, this can be easily handled. So if this YJ is at the most one constraint is not tight, then it's the same as we don't have this constraint, right? And uh, if it's tight, uh, so this YBJ is exactly one, what we will do is we will let the inner ball to be the outer ball. And the new inner ball will be half radius of ball, uh, becomes uh, even smaller. Then we will make pro progress, okay? So that gives us the idea now I can formally describe the iterative rounding procedure. So in the procedure, we maintain the following environments. So for every client J, we maintain an outer ball FJ. The radius of the outer ball uh, is denoted as, as RJ. And the inner ball is the ball centered at J with radius RJ over two. That's the inner ball. We make sure that the outer balls for the core set of clients are disjoint. So FJ, J over uh, in C star are disjoint. And then we maintain the four node in LP during the iterative rounding. And uh, we wanted to minimize sum over all the clients C and the, the cost of J. The cost of J is defined as before, again, it's sum over I in the inner ball of J, YI times DIJ plus one minus YBJ times RJ over two. Okay, so uh, this is what if you don't connect to a client in BJ. And then we have constraints, YF is at most K, YIs are non-negative. Then we require that 
for a client in the core set C star, the sum of Y values in FJ is exactly one. And uh, for all the clients J, YBJ is at most one. Uh, but of course, uh, YFJ for J in C star is exactly one. So YBJ is at most one for J in C star. So we don't need them, uh, they are redundant, okay? So this is a LP we maintain in the iterative rounding procedure. And uh, this comes to iterative rounding algorithm and uh, it's quite natural. So first we initialize FJ, RJ, BJ and C star using a greedy algorithm. So the greedy algorithm is just, uh, uh, we sort all the clients uh, from the smallest to the biggest in terms of uh, RJ. Then we choose a client added to C star to C star if it does not overlap with the previous jobs, uh, previous clients added to C star, okay. Then in every iteration, we first find the optimal vertex solution Y star to this LP. If this constraint is tight for some BJ, we do the following. So we let FJ be BJ, then RJ to be the radius of FJ, then the new BJ will be the ball centered at J with RJ over two. Then we call a update C star, which will be defined soon. Then we go to step two again. We repeat this procedure because the LP now has changed. So C stars have been changed, RJs have been changed. We need to find a new optimal solution Y star to this LP. So the algorithm terminates when uh, none of those constraints are tight. Okay. Now I need to define what is update C star. Okay, so this is the procedure. Uh, I wanted to add a J to C star, and we check all the uh, clients J prime that are already in C, C star, such that FJ and FJ prime, they overlap. And uh, if for all those uh, clients J prime, the radius of uh, FJ, so RJ prime, is at least two times RJ. So they are all very big compared to RJ. Then we will add J to C star. And uh, at the same time, removing all the uh, overlapping balls from C star. So all those J prime uh, with FJ intersects, uh, FJ prime is not empty. We remove all those clients. So in other words, the RJ has to be very small in order to, for J to enter C star. Okay, so for example, uh, if this is J and uh, this is another client that's already in C star, but the radius of the ball is not too big, it's at most uh, RJ, then we don't uh, add J to C star. So we do nothing. Uh, in the other case, all the overlapping balls have radius at least two RJ, then we add J to C star and uh, removing all the uh, uh, other balls that overlap with FJ. Okay, so this is update C star, and uh, then we have the whole algorithm, the iterative rounding algorithm, and we find the Y star in every iteration. If there is a tight constraint of this type, we update uh, FJ, RJ, BJ, update C star. Okay, so questions so far? Okay, let me uh, continue with the analysis of the algorithm. So there are many simple observations we can make. So the variants are maintained. So FJ is a ball around the J, RJ is the radius of FJ, BJ is the half ball, and then Y star is always valid to the uh, LP uh, for the iterative rounding. So every iteration we try to find a Y star, of course then Y star will be valid. But uh, if we update CJ, uh, C star, FJ, BJ, we also guarantee that Y star is valid. 
Okay, this can be seen from a more general lemma that says the value of Y star to this LP can only go down. Okay, so why this is the case? So remember in the LP, the contribution of J is defined as follows, sum of I in BJ, Y I D I J, uh, plus one minus BJ times RJ over two, and the value of Y star to the LP is the sum of the contribution of J over every J. So if we try to resolve the linear program, then the value can only decrease because Y star will be the new optimum solution to the LP. So the value can only decrease. But we, the key thing is we wanted to check if we update FJ, RJ, and BJ, uh, Y star remains valid and Y star the value does not uh, go up. Okay, so this is the case because uh, y, B, y star BJ is one. So if this is BJ, the old BJ, if the Y value of this BJ is one, and uh, then we update BJ to the new BJ, then the contribution of the J can only go down because the uh, in the original ball is just the, the sum of all distances times YJ uh, times YI, but in the new uh, LP, the contribution is this those distances the times YJ, but this distance now we use this radius. So use RJ over two and uh, it goes down. So then the value of Y star to this new LP can only be smaller. Okay, so the contribution of J can only be smaller. And uh, then the algorithm when it terminates, the Y star will be integral. This is uh, not hard to show because uh, we terminate the algorithm only when none of those constraints are tight. So Y star is a vertex solution. If only those constraints are tight, then Y star will be integral. So they form a nominal polytope and the Y star will be integral. So finally, uh, we show that when the uh, algorithm terminates, the true cost of J in the solution is at most 10 times the contribution of J in Y star to the uh, LP in the iterative rounding procedure. So why is that the case? So I'm going to give you the worst case scenario. So initially we try to add J to C star and J has radius RJ, but we failed. The reason why we failed is because we have another client in C star with the same or smaller radius. So in the worst case, it will be the same radius, but in the procedure, this client is also removed from C star. But uh, to remove it from C star, we need a ball of half the radius, where right? this ball has a half radius of this ball and they overlap. So we remove this uh, client from C star, add this from to C star, this new client. And this can repeat forever, uh, this ball of radius RJ over two is removed by a ball of radius RJ over four, and this can continue forever. So if you add them up, you get this uh, constant 10. So our cost in the LP is RJ over two, but the actual cost is one plus one plus one plus half plus half, which will be five. So you get a, a factor of 10. Okay, so this gives you a factor of 10 approximation for the problem. But if you are using a different scale, tau instead of two, uh, this is what you get. And uh, a standard trick you can use is by randomly shifting the uh, distances. So if you do that, this tau becomes this random parameter A. So we let ln A to be uniformly between zero and non tau. 
So this can give you this new uh, approximation factor. And uh, overall, the approximation factor is three tau minus one over ln tau. And we optimize this function, we get 7.081. Okay, so this is the approximation factor uh, for k-median using the iterative rounding procedure. And the whole framework can easily extend to the k-means uh, problem. So the constant will be different. Okay, then how can we extend the algorithm to the k-median with outliers problem? Uh, well, uh, in the k-median with outliers problem, not all the clients need to be connected. So we have variables that indicate whether each client should be connected or not. Then we need a constraint that the number of con connected clients is at least a minus z. And we need this in the natural LP relaxation, and we maintain this constraint in the LP for the iterative rounding procedure. Now, what happens? What happens is because now we have an additional constraint, when the algorithm terminates, y star is not integral anymore. We have this additional constraint. The pony top is not integral anymore, but we still have that y star is almost integral. So it contains at most two fractional values because we only have one such uh, uh, constraint. Okay, so this gives us a 7.08 one, uh, one approximation uh, with k plus one open facilities. So if we increase uh, the fractional values to one, but if we wanted to have a true approximation, uh, we need to do some pre-processing. Without the pre-processing, uh, the integrality gap is large. Recall that this is the framework. We do the pre-processing first to get a sparse instance. And with the sparse instance, then we can convert to the almost integral solution to the integral solution. Okay, so here are some ideas on how we do the pre-processing and why they are okay. And uh, so in the last step, we obtain an almost integral solution with two uh, fractional y values. So in the worst case, one y value is epsilon, the other y value is one plus epsilon. Okay, those are the two fractional y values. And we have no control over how we round the two y values. You can't say that I just change this to zero, change this to one, because we wanted to maintain the number of connected uh, clients uh, to make sure the number of connect connected clients is a minus z. Maybe we are forced to increase this to one and decrease to this to zero. Then those operations will increase the cost. So if we increase uh, the yi value from epsilon to one, then we need to increase the connection uh, fraction from epsilon to one also, simply to satisfy the outlier constraint. So if you want to make sure the cost is small, we need to require the star, the cost of the star is at most epsilon opt times the yi of this uh, center. Okay, so that's what is required. But how can we guarantee this condition? Well, we do pre-processing. So if some client, some facility uh, has a large cost, then we just open it uh, directly and fix the variable to one. And in the remaining procedure, this won't happen. So we just need to make one over epsilon uh, guesses. And the second case is uh, we may need to decrease this value from one plus e, one minus epsilon to zero. And those connection will increases from epsilon to one, which may incur a big cost. But if this happens, then we can find a small ball, a small radius ball, and the cost of this ball in the optimal solution is huge. If this happens again, we just fix the connections of those uh, clients 
and fix them in the LP, we focus on the remaining instance. So what we do to, in the pre-processing is we guess all the one over epsilon events under the condition that those events happen, we have a good instance. Okay, so I think that's enough time. So let me do a summary. So in the talk, I gave a iterative rounding framework for k-median and k-means with outliers problem that achieves constant approximation. And the k-median with outliers, the approximation ratio has been improved by Gupta et al. So in their rounding algorithm, they maintain two sets of disjoint balls. So they have a C star and a C star prime. And the balls in C star are disjoint. The balls in C star prime are disjoint. And that gives them a bipartite matching polytope. And although it's not as good as the disjoint ball structure, they can still manage it to do the iterative rounding and eventually they get a 6.387 approximation. Okay, that concludes my talk. And uh, thank you for listening. And I'm ready to take questions.